Today's review is sponsored by Nudist Anonymous, the helpline for those who have the urge to rip their clothes off and run around. I'm their number one member. Watch it, Alan. I'm shooting. Hell of the Living Dead. <laughs> Sorry, boys, I'm not on the menu after all. <laughs> Don't let it worry you. I think you will all meet again. <laughs> In hell! We're diving into another movie by the master of Italian ripoffs, Bruno Mattei. Now, just to give you fair warning, for my entire life, I've been pronouncing it Bruno Mattei. I know that's not the proper pronunciation. I have been working on it, but... Just keep in mind, don't be surprised if I slip up and say Matai instead of Matei. I'm actually a big fan of Bruno Matei. Like I said, he was the master of Italian ripoffs. There was a stipulation in Italy back during the 70s and 80s where Italian filmmakers had to make movies that were like popular American movies or popular foreign movies. As a result, there were a lot of unofficial Italian sequels, Italian remakes, or just Italian versions of popular foreign films. <laughs> Hell of the Living Dead is one of the many Italian versions of Dawn of the Dead. Now, here's a fun fact for you all. The original Dawn of the Dead was, of course, directed by George Romero, but the Italian film director Dario Argento helped him get that movie made. And because of that, he was allowed to edit his own version of the movie and made the Italian version of Dawn of the Dead known as Zombie. Now, many people on my channel have heard me say that I've grown sick of the zombie genre because of the constant bombardment of zombie-related material out there, but I do still love certain zombie movies. I like Hell of the Living Dead because it's fun in a cheesy way. The movie begins in a power plant, I mean secret government facility. The scientists there have been working on an experiment codenamed Operation Sweet Death, because this is a gory, sleazy Italian exploitation movie, there's no room for subtlety. Experimental project Operation Sweet Death must be considered a complete failure. Some kind of degenerative process has begun which may be catastrophic for everybody. May God forgive us. After something goes wrong with a gas leak and a zombified rat, there's a containment breach, and the next thing we know, they're zombies. For the rest of the movie, we're following a reporter, her cameraman, and a group of soldiers in New Guinea. The reporter is trying to find out what's been happening among the local tribes, and the soldiers have been sent there to try to find the origin of this new infection. We get a lot of zombie shenanigans, a lot of crazy over-the-top acting, and stock footage. Incidentally, what are we going to do with those two reporters? We'll have to ditch them someplace. Let's address the elephant in the room. Hey, that was kind of like a real joke. We can't have that here. Bruno Mattei used a fair amount of stock footage in this movie. He did use stock footage in certain movies of his, and it adds to the cheesy fun. You see the characters looking out at the local wildlife, and you can tell these two things are not in the same movie. There are scenes where people are having a meeting about the crisis, but you can tell that Bruno Mattei just took footage from some random meeting and then dubbed over it. I insist that the most serious situation we have to deal with is cremating the bodies. All the dead have to be burned within two hours before they turn into these dreadful monsters. Yeah, I don't think that's what these people are talking about. Hell of the Living Dead is a Dawn of the Dead ripoff, but you can kind of view it as a companion piece to Dawn of the Dead. The soldiers dress a lot like the officers in Dawn of the Dead. Both movies use Goblin in their soundtrack. And I kind of like how this movie shows how the outbreak got started, kind of like in 28 Days Later. 
Of course, here it's a tad convoluted, but again, that adds to the fun. There's a zombified rat that gets into someone's hazmat suit and, well, just look. <laughs> I also like how this movie shows how a zombie outbreak would affect a primitive country. Usually in zombie movies we see zombies in the city or in the countryside. We don't often see zombies in primitive tribal lands. That does happen sometimes. We do have some movies that focus on that but not much. The original Night of the Living Dead took place at a farmhouse, but that's still closer to civilization than the village of a primitive tribe. <laughs> the thing about Bruno Mattei is he wasn't a fan of these kinds of movies. He did not like the movies he made, but he never did a half-assed job. He still went out of his way to make these movies entertaining. You'll notice in the opening credits, the director name is Vincent Dawn. It was common for Italian directors to use fake names, either because they thought a more American-sounding name would allow the movie to have a wider audience, or because they just did not want their name attached to the movie. Vincent Dawn was one of the more common names used. <laughs> Hell of the Living Dead is an exploitation flick in the truest sense. Exploitation movies exploited what audiences wanted to see, like nudity and violence. This has plenty of nudity and violence, to the point where it's almost comical in certain parts. In a good way, though. In a way that makes the movie fun. <laughs> There's one particular scene where the reporter Leah, played by Margie Newton, is going to talk to one of the local tribes. Now, that's all that's going on here. She's going to talk to the people to see if it's safe for the group to enter the village. And then she takes her top off. What do you think we should do? I'll have to go ahead and meet them, and go alone. I want to reiterate, she's just going in to talk to one of the local tribes, and apparently that requires her to be mostly naked. Maybe there was a reason for this, but in the terms of the movie, it was just done to get this woman naked. And I'm all for that. That goes for the gore, too. It's that fun, low-budget gore. And I don't mean that in a bad way. The practical effects are well done. <laughs> But this movie being an Italian exploitation movie, you know that the people involved had limited time and resources to make this movie. There was a high demand for movies back in the 70s and 80s in Italy, so filmmakers had to bang these movies out as quickly as possible. Bruno Mattei made a total of three movies in 1980, a documentary, an adult movie, and Hell of the Living Dead. So the gore effects in this movie are a little rough around the edges but in a way that makes them better. They're well done and a little messy, which adds to the charm. <laughs> Hell of the Living Dead has one of the best kills in any zombie movie, but fair warning, this is going to require spoilers for the end of the movie, so if you have not seen Hell of the Living Dead, just skip to this time in the video to avoid spoilers. I'll give you a minute. Okay, here we go. So the majority of the main characters have been killed off. It's now down to Leah and her lover. They get surrounded by zombies, and one of the zombies reaches into Leah's mouth and pulls out her tongue. But it doesn't stop there. It then shoves her tongue back in her mouth so hard that it pops her eyeballs out of her sockets. <laughs> if that doesn't count as one of the top five zombie kills, I don't know what does. The movie does have entertaining characters to guide us through the zombie apocalypse, there's some fun dialogue, some good character moments among the dead, but hands down, the best character in this movie is Zantoro, played by Franco Garofalo. <laughs> it's not loaded! <laughs> yeah. Boom! 
You can tell he's not the most mentally sound person, and he's having the time of his life in the zombie apocalypse. He has this devil-may-care attitude. He has fun taunting the zombies while they're trying to eat him. <laughs> you can't catch me! Get back to your graves! Beat it! Screw off! Come on! This way! I'm waiting for you! Damn it! Use your friggin' head! He's the guy who figures out that the only way to kill the zombies is by shooting them in the head. Leave it to me. All you have to do is shoot it right through the head. And we, the audience, identify with Xantoro because everyone else keeps forgetting to shoot the fuckers in the head. We horror fans get frustrated when characters don't shoot the zombies in the head. So does Xantoro. Some of his best moments are when he gets angry that people aren't shooting the zombies in the head. Cut it out! Stop wasting your damn bullets, you jerks! You need to hit their heads! I told you! Say it like this! I love Xantoro, one of the best characters in zombie movies. Hell of the Living Dead is by no means a perfect zombie movie, but in a way, it's the imperfections that make it better. It's why I love Italian exploitation. These filmmakers did what they could with what they had to make fun, sleazy, gory movies. Even though I've had a bit of a falling out with the zombie genre, I'll always have a special place for Hell of the Living Dead. I recommend watching it if you're looking for some cheesy fun. And with that, let's get to the Grindhouse rankings. We've got a body count of 56, I think. It gets kind of messy with zombie movies. The kills mostly consist of people being ripped apart by zombies and zombies getting their heads blown off. It reaches the zombie requirements with a spreading virus, people coming back from the dead, flesh eating, and gunshots to the head. There's a good amount of nudity, mostly Margie Newton's breasts, but we do get some tribal nudity in certain scenes and stock footage. We have some good characters here, but Santoro is clearly the best. His over-the-top performance makes him so much fun to watch. There's some quality, low-budget gore here. It's a little rough around the edges, but still well done. The story is rather simple, but we're not here for the plot anyway. We're here for fun, bloody, zombie action. There is a cheesiness to this movie. It almost falls into the so bad it's good category, but because so much effort was put into this, it helps pull it into the just good category. You might be thrown off by the stock footage, but for me, it just adds to the cheesy fun. I'm giving this a 3.9 out of 5. It might not qualify as a classic zombie movie, but there's a lot of entertainment here. It's an imperfect movie done in a perfect way. As always, I want to thank everyone for continuing to watch and support this channel. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think is the most fun zombie movie. I'm not talking about the best. I'm not talking about the scariest. I'm talking about the one that's the most fun to watch. This is The Maniac, here to remind you that the Grindhouse will never die. Hey, look over there! <laughs> Boy, that's sure something that's really happening in my house right now.